Direct from the Broski Nation headquarters in Los Angeles, California, this is the Broski Report with your host, Brittany Broski. Okay, let's get this motherfucking ball rolling! <laughs> Woo! Sorry. Sorry to my editor. Sorry to my editor. I am so fucking sorry. Guys, I'm not going to sit here and lie. I've had about, <laughs> give or take, five or six cocktails. Cocktails. Alcohol-infused mocktails, if you will. This is going to be a Mai Tai that I made for myself. There are a lot of things to talk about since the last episode. A lot has developed. I am, if you can't tell, goth. <laughs> I am what some would refer to as alternative, goth, emo even. I have recently, you know, I shouted out Gels, my, my sister in Christ on the last episode because she hooked us up with sleep token tickets. Gels has put me on to a bunch of like progressive metal bands and I'm going to go ahead and also, hey guys, I'm Brittany Broski, host of the Broski Report starring me, Brittany Broski. I am drunk. I'm like a five, six out of 10. Like, shut the fuck up. I'm going to watch this back and be like, top three, number three, most annoying people on the internet. Number three, Brittany Broski, formerly known as Kombucha Girl, Brittany Broski has certified herself as one of the most annoying people on the internet today, <laughs> clocking in at over 15 million followers across all platforms. <laughs> she is undeniably very annoying. My Wait, emo era, emo shit, girl. What are my playlists? My emo era. Here's what I'm listening to, okay? Holding Absence. Get into Honeymoon by Holding Absence. Here's, here are my songs of the week. Sleep Talk by Dayseeker, bitch. Bitch, you motherfucker. Get into Sleep Talk by Dayseeker. I've got Without Me by Dayseeker. We're rocking with Bad Omens, of course, Death of Peace of Mind, uh, Just Pretend, Like a Villain. We're rocking with Two-Way Mirror by Loathe. Love that song. Descending by Sleep Token, and obviously all of my Sleep Token songs um, that I'm obsessed with. We've also got Second Sequence by Memorist. I'm not joking, bitch. When I like something, I go balls deep. I go shaft deep. I am I am shaft deep, balls slapping against <laughs> When I like something, I am to the hilt. <laughs> it, it. And I hate to give men attention, actually. I'm not going to fucking in. I, I'm not going to say who I was watching, but I was watching a ghost cosplayer because, dude, I. it's like, you know the segment's coming, right? I'm doing the episode. We're chugging along. I'm talking about what? Womanhood and the weight of being alive. And then at the last 30 seconds, you know I'm going to be like, and then you know what? Call, Call of Duty cosplayer dick. I have got to talk about penis at some point on the podcast because this podcast should honestly be retitled Anti-Bechtel. Anti, the the Anti-Bechtel Report. Not once have I passed the Bechtel test. Begging, begging just once to do this podcast and not mention a man. Anyway, I was on uh, TikTok, TikTok Live as I do. I was scrolling. And I come across this live who's a, a, an up and coming, one of my new favorite sort of, uh, not favorite, but I'm, I'm enjoying the content. He cosplays. <laughs> I'm fucking stupid. Cause like you guys don't care, but you do. I'm assuming you do. I can sit up here and talk about fucking like my swollen asshole. And someone would be like, no, see, this is why I love Brittany Broski. <laughs> he cosplays the 2009 version of ghost, which is this sort of like, husky daddy winter coat fleece sunglasses it's my favorite ghost it's my favorite version of ghost when i see him i'm like oh my god he cosplays that like exclusively and i'm so into it also i'm sick i feel like tana mojo in this moment am i giving a little tana mojo and i will say one of my comfort videos is tana mojo and trevi moran in mexico okay but i understand she's problematic trust me i fucking get it but have you seen that video but have you watched that video? <laughs> it's 
that's fucking gold. I when I'm having the worst day of my life, I put on that video, I'm giggling. Okay? Anyway, feeling very I was just channeling Tana for like a hot 25 seconds. This dude cosplays 2009 uh, uh, Winter Ghost. I'll put him up here. Okay. This is like, this is my baby's father. I know we're coming up on like five or six baby's fathers that I do have. This is going to be probably, you know, number five. He cosplays this ghost and I'm like super into it. And the videos are really cute. Well, he went live and girl, 40 people in it. When I tell you I am a lurker, when I tell you I am always fucking watching, I'm watching. I'm watching. I'm clocked in. I'm on the clock. I'm watching. And he came across my feed. And I said, join live. Because what the fuck else am I supposed to do? Wait from the outside? On the outside looking in. What the fuck is Jordan Pruitt doing? Remember Jordan Pruitt? Jump to the rhythm and dance to the music. On the rhythm and show how we do it. Jordan Pruitt. On the outside. That's little. That's me. When I'm lurking on the TikToks, I'm outside. And then I'll join. When I'm like, you know what? I'll join. Immediately I commandeer it. I comment, hi, boyfriend. Actually, I didn't even comment. It's just secret Britney has joined. Bitch, everyone went crazy. Everyone. Because the 40 people in there are what? Broski Nation. Ooh, 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 ooh. Everyone in there. Hi, Brittany. Hi, Bestie. Hi, Brittany. I was like, let's go, ladies. What the fuck is good? My girls are in this live, okay? This is my live. Look at me. This is my live, dude. There's a mosquito in here. I eat it. Immediately, I'm in this live, and he's like, Brittany Brewski? Oh, I hate men. Brittany Brewski? Yeah, bitch. Brittany Broski. So I joined the live. I'm talking to the girls. He's like, Oh, that's crazy. And then I keep, I'm like aggressively flirting because guess what? I've had six mocktails. I've had six alcohol infused mocktails. Okay. I did start the night with a watermelon Red Bull and three shots of vodka. Don't ask me questions. Don't ask me questions. Do I have a sinus infection? Yeah, I do. Okay. Am I blowing green snot? Yeah, I am. Why? What questions do you have for me about blowing green snot out of my nose? Started with that. Made myself a Mai Tai. Guess what? Made myself another Mai Tai. Here's the recipe for my Mai Tai. White rum. 1.5 ounces white rum. One ounce dark rum. One ounce lime juice. One ounce orange curacao. One ounce orgiat syrup. Okay? It's like an almond syrup. Ice and a little bit of mint. And you, and you, uh, uh, you shake it. And then you get a Mai Tai and it's fucking delicious. And guess what? It's Pamela Anderson's favorite cocktail. And if you think about it, I'm Pamela Anderson if she was on meth. If you think about it, I'm Pamela Anderson if she was on methamphetamine. <laughs> if you really like give it, <laughs> give it a brainstorm, you can kind of, you know, put two and two together. Anyway, I joined this live and this dude, because fucking, I hate men. I hate men, but I need them. I hate men, but I need them to want me. I'm not doing FaceTime right now, guys. Who's FaceTiming me? Should I answer it? I'm doing podcast right now. What is that? That's going to be Taylor. That's going to be Taylor. That's going to be Taylor. That's going to be Taylor Swift. Okay, so that's actually going to be Taylor Swift. Ian, go ahead and put it up there again. Put it up there again. That's going to be Taylor S. right now. That's going to be Taylor S. on the carpet. Taylor Swift's team. That's insane. We've infiltrated Swifty Nation? No, we've infiltrated Swifty Nation. That makes sense. Ian, she's right she's there. Dinner. No, Brittany, I ha she's going to dinner with you like next week. Put it up, okay? Okay, period. <laughs> Ian, yeah. and hi, all. I'm going to throw up. That's insane. Say hi, it, hi, all. Brittany, go like this. Hi, all. Hi. Okay, I'm not going to be doing that. <laughs> okay, so I did actually turn the camera around. <laughs> all right, love y'all. Okay, I love you, bye. So that was actually going to be Ian Smith uh, FaceTiming me looking at Taylor Swift. So I don't really have <laughs> any answers as to what's going on there. What, what premiere is she at? What is that? Or is that an award show? What, today's October 11th. What, what's going on there? Swifty Nation, tell me what's going on. I'm kind of out of the loop. Okay, anyway, so I joined this guy's live. Can I shut the fuck up? Can I shut the fuck up for 
one moment, for one second in time, can I just consider not talking about Call of Duty? I join this young gentleman's live and um, I commandeer it, okay? This is, look at me, I'm the captain now, sort of moment. And I think it's so funny because, hey, did you hear what was in my throat? I think it's so funny because people are like, oh, uh, who's Brittany? And then I'll be like, all right, I'm leaving the live. And everyone's like, bye. And then I'll leave the live. I'll leave, quote unquote. I'm still in it. Guess what? Because I'm a lurker. I'm lurking. And people will be like, wait, that was actually really cool. Like the, the, the fucking cosplayer, he's like, that was actually really cool. Yeah, I, actually, I think she's really funny. Brothers, you can say that when I'm in there. Men compliment women without uh, being shy challenge. Men compliment women without being cringy and uh, creepy and shy challenge. Impossible. Level impossible. Pre-gaming a podcast episode is crazy, by the way. That's crazy. I don't know what I've talked about in the last 14 minutes. This weekend, I'm going to ACL, Austin City Limits. Some of you know it, some of you don't. ACL is the Lollapalooza of the South. Okay, this year is the most like 2013, 2014 indie year ever. Like perhaps even, mm, I won't say that. I was going to say surpassing the sort of 2014, 2015 ACL lineup. This year is Hosier, Mumford and Sons, the 1975. It's like uh, M83, dude! Ah! M83? It's the most Tumblr-coded lineup of any festival I've seen in a long time. Maybe Lollapalooza has the same. What Lollapalooza is in what? July, August? I don't know. Uh, ACL is always in October. And the minute the lineup was released, Taylor and I were like, oh, it's over, bitch. It is over. We're shutting it down. We're shutting down ACL. I can't even like explain to you how this came about because honest to god i don't know and i need everyone everyone what i'm about to say is like it's shell shocking i need everyone to take a deep breath with me okay on three one two three inhale hold it exhale again inhale the snot in my throat exhale I'm interviewing Hosier on Sunday. <laughs> this episode of the Broski Report is sponsored by SeatGeek. With over 28 million downloads, SeatGeek is the number one rated ticketing app. There's more than 70,000 events every single day on SeatGeek, including concerts, sports, festivals, and so many more. I'm seeing Hosier at the Hollywood Bowl later this year, and I have been watching these ticket prices like a hawk. I can tell you that right now. There's plenty of other events that are on sale, like sporting events. The NBA and NHL playoffs are right around the corner, and baseball is back. Concerts like Taylor Swift, Luke Combs, Ed Sheeran, Drake, all are on tour, so you're not going to want to miss out. SeatGeek puts all the tickets across the web in one place to make sure you're getting a good deal. Each ticket is rated on a scale of 1 to 10, so look for the green dots. Green means good, red means bad. Every ticket is backed by their buyer guarantee, and SeatGeek is the only site that lets you return your tickets ahead of the event with swaps. And you know I have a code for you guys. So use my code BROSKI for $20 off tickets at SeatGeek. That's $20 off your first purchase with promo code BROSKI. Make sure you click the link in the description to download the app. Thanks, guys. This episode is sponsored by HelloFresh. Even though the fall can feel jam-packed, HelloFresh makes whipping up a home-cooked dinner actually doable with quick and easy options, including their 15-minute meals. That's less time than it takes to get delivery. And with everything pre-portioned and delivered right to your door every week, it's really a no-brainer. We all know HelloFresh takes the hassle out of meal time, but did you know it can also save you money? HelloFresh is cheaper than grocery shopping and 25% less expensive than takeout. That means less stress in your day and more money back in your pocket. I love HelloFresh because I always make way too much food because I have the too much gene. And I'm usually only cooking for one, so I always end up wasting food. So the pre-portioned ingredients really are a lifesaver. Go to HelloFresh.com slash 50Broski and use 50Broski for 50% off plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash 50Broski with code 50Broski for 50% off plus free shipping. 
HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. I'm interviewing Hosier on Sunday for my YouTube channel. For just that, for my YouTube channel. His team agreed. His team approved a 30-minute interview between me and Andrew Hosier Byrne. One of my favorite artists of all time in this lifetime. Hosier's music has changed me as a person in a way that words fail me. Words fail to explain and describe, especially six mocktails deep. Especially six Mai Tais deep. Words fail me. How influential Hosier has been as an artist, as an activist, as an intellectual, as a creative, I really, really respect Hosier's entire sentiment towards being a creative when you have millions of people's ears. You have millions of people's ears. What do you say? And it, it's something that I, I respect about him to the point where I could cry about it. His whole mentality is solidarity costs nothing. Solidarity costs you nothing. Think about that. To stand next to someone and say, I agree with what you're saying. To say, I recognize your struggle and I'm here with you. I'm here to lend a helping hand. To extend your hand in that sort of like, hold my hand and we're going to stand in line and I'm here with you. Solidarity costs nothing. That has changed my life in a way that I, I can't really explain. And it's such a simple sentiment, you know, but I just, I love him so much. He has a song called Nina Cried Power, which I've talked about for so long about the civil rights movement and how Mavis Staples influenced him as, as a child and as a creative and how the civil rights movement in America influenced the civil rights movement in Ireland. He's talked about how in, he has a song called Swan Upon Leda. It is directly, it is directly about the overturning of Roe v. Wade and about the loss of women's autonomy over their own bodies. That is directly what it's about. And when he released Swan Upon Leda, I was like, there is not, there are such few artists that are doing what Hosier is doing. And I just love him so, so much. And I feel the same way about Hosier that I feel about Beyonce. That's like, you bitches say that you like this artist, but you have no fucking clue. You have no fucking idea. Because the true, what, Hosier Hive, <laughs> Beehive Hosier Hive, the Andrew Hive, that's my community, bitch. It's like, it's like you have to really understand where he's coming from, who he is, where that activism comes from, what his sort of life experience is, and how that feeds into and directly influences his art. I just love him to goddamn death. And I get to interview him. And I have what I've worked on for a very long time, a list of interview questions that I feel like a lot of interviewers get wrong. When you interview a celebrity, there are certain things that their team wants you to, to touch on. I understand that completely. When I interviewed Jack Harlow, to be transparent, um, there were certain things that they were like, you should talk about this. You should definitely ask him about this. And it's like 100%. I'm here as a vessel to get information from Jack Carlo to Jack Carlo fans or from Jack Carlo to the universe. You know what I mean? I was acting as a vessel in that moment. As any interviewer is, you are sharing information about this person that people want to know or maybe people didn't consider. When it comes to Hosier, when it comes to an artist that I just like, I, I love is not a strong enough word. I've, come up with a list of questions that I think are both equal parts respectful and honoring towards his art and towards his creative vision and kind of what he's doing as an artist and also equal parts funny and just I want to giggle I'm sorry am I a criminal because I want to giggle with Andrew Hosier Byrne he is a funny dude and he is funny bitch you bitches don't he's a funny dude if you watch any interview where the interviewer kind of allows him to like go into that part of his personality. He is very, you can't be that smart. You can't write Swan Upon Leda and take me to church and abstract and cherry wine without being one of the most intellectual individuals alive. He is so smart. And I think a lot of, to do stand up comedy, 
To be a famous comedian, you have to be very smart. One thing about Trixie Mattel, bitch, that bitch is so smart. To be that level, her and Katya both, to be that level of funny, Bianca Del Rio, Bob the Drag Queen, these people are so cultured. They're so witty. They're so well-referenced. They're, they're so well-rounded. They're so informed. You have to have that as a basis for your comedy. And I respect the hell out of it. And with Hosier, it, it's, it's part of it too. You can't have all that knowledge in your brain and not be funny, I think. I, th I just, I love them to death. You know what else I also realized? We haven't referenced the Mickey Mouse nuke phone. The nuke codes are on this Mickey Mouse, uh, what's this called? House phone, desk phone. Yeah, hello? Joe, I can't talk right now. No, I'm doing a, I'm doing a podcast episode. No, you know that I, you know that I would, I would be there, but this kind of takes precedence. You know, that there's like a, yeah. There's a schedule to upload and I've got, yeah, it's a contract. No, I'll call you later. I miss you too. Yeah. All right. I'll see you later. Okay. Bye. Sorry. That was Joe Biden. Um, he wants me to come to do a, it's a whole thing. Um, I'll call him back later. What I really wanted to say was at ACL, the 1975 and Mumford and Sons are performing. That is the most 2014 thing I've ever heard in my fucking life, by the way. And let me talk about this because some of, some of y'all have been asking me thoughts on, on Noah and how do you say his name? Khan? Noah Khan. I need to get into Noah Khan. My bestie Taylor loves Noah, loves him. And I've been seeing uh, clips of his shows on my For You page. And also because he, he's, uh, Hosier brought him out for one of the like stops on his tour, I think at a festival stop. And at ACL, because I'm going to weekend two, which is this weekend, weekend one just happened. Hosier brought out Noah because they're both performing. Brought Noah out to sing, uh, uh, or no, Noah brought out Hosier to sing Northern, Northern Altitude, I think is the name of the song. Northern Attitude is the name of the song. I don't know. I need to get into him. I'm so sorry. I'm going to watch this episode back in six months and be like, Northern, whatever. I'm going to be pissed because like I'm going to become a fan. Brought him out. And so I'm like, if Hosier respects him as this sort of, um, and I don't want to misidentify or miss uh, uh, genre Noah, but it's this sort of indie folk revival that's happening. This indie folk pop bluesy revival that he's a part of which I think is really really special and it's something that's so I always talk about how art history directly is uh interlinked with real history you know with with human history you cannot tell the story of human history without art history and it is so incredibly interesting to be living through as Gen Z so many tragic events arguably more than uh, Gen X ever went through or fucking baby boomers ever went through, the rapid changes that millennials and Gen Z have lived through, not even to mention Gen Alpha, that have completely changed human society and human networking and how humans connect with each other. To live through all that and also to have music as the sort of pulse, the way that art history is the pulse of humanity, you know, you can, you can say on, on paper, we lived through a pandemic, school shootings are a thing, uh, war in the East is a thing, this, that, and the other, all these things we've lived through, but how are we processing it? And it's been so, so interesting to see, <laughs> all that to say, these really heavy topics, to say, I think the revival of folk music is really, <laughs> it's really interesting because... But it's true. Why is this return to folk happening? Why are people seeking out country music? Why are people seeking out bluegrass? Why are people seeking out folk? Why are they seeking out the blues? And I think all of it has to do with, these are sad times we're living through. That coupled with the sort of Phoebe Bridgers, Phoebe Bridgers Mitski of it all, the boy genius of it all, people love a sad song. That's happening at the same time that Olivia Rodrigo bedroom pop is happening and I could write a whole thesis on it of the dichotomy of which one is a more real representation of the human spirit is Olivia Rodrigo making the music that we 
want to hear, but Noah Khan and Hosier and Tyler Childers and Coulter Wall and Zach Bryan, are they making the music that we need to hear? Phoebe Bridgers, I think, is... I don't know. I would love to actually hear y'all's input in the comments. Phoebe Bridgers, what do you think her sort of cultural impact will be solidified as in the future? Because, uh, like, I love Phoebe. And I don't even know what the fuck genre she is. I don't know what genre Phoebe Bridgers is. And I think that's a beautiful thing. Because genre is a way, like I said in the last episode, to categorize music in a way that is palatable for marketing and it's palatable for charting and to make money from music. But from a creative standpoint, what is genre? And I think Phoebe Bridgers, I can't fit her into anything other than alt. But what is alt? What is alt? And what's indie at this point? You know, it does not mean what it used to mean in 2013, 2014. I'm, I'm excited to see what, like when Phoebe Bridgers, I'm drunk. Hold on. Can I just say, for the record, if I cornered you at a house party, <laughs> this is what we'd be talking about. <laughs> Every house party I go to, this is the bullshit I corner. I, You know what Ian calls it? Punisher. <laughs> he calls people who, when you're drunk, they corner you and they won't shut the fuck up. Ian calls those people punishers. <laughs> They're punishing you. <laughs> if you get me going about something like this, bitch, I am not going to shut the fuck up. One thing about me, I'm not going to shut up. One thing about me, try to get me to shut up. Those memes of like when a kidnapper gets you, I'm going to get you. Throws, throws you in the back of the car and he's wearing a mask. And I'm like, we. So what's your name? Where are you from? Oh my God. Do you have any siblings? <laughs> when a masked man kidnaps me. Oh my god. No, what's the one that Tanner does? Tanner Tan69? What's his name? 36? I love him to goddamn death. He did one with the <laughs> with the jigsaw. I've never seen Saw. Jigsaw from Saw. Where they were like, when a masked man kidnaps you, but you're into you have a mask kink. And he was like, smash. And it, it's him and his bestie laughing in the back. That's not funny, by the way. I lost steam halfway through telling you guys that. If you could imagine right now, I want you to close your eyes, take your hands off the wheel. Imagine a big bowl of Honey Nut Cheerios. <laughs> okay, don't look at the road. Go 95 miles an hour. Do not look at the road. A big bowl of Honey Nut Cheerios. Okay? Oat milk. We're, we're going with uh, Oatly or Planet Oat. Big bowl of Honey Nut Cheerios. We're going to do cut up bananas in it. And we're going to do a little on top of honey okay of all natural cage free honey and i don't know why you would keep bees in cages i don't know why you would do that cage free honey that's what i'm rocking with right now that is in my mind i'm talking about oh the societal impact of i want a bowl of honey nut cheerios okay okay it's pov we're at a house party <laughs> POV, we're at a house party. We're in the middle of talking about the cultural impact of Swan Upon Leda by Hosier when it comes to the Roe v. Wade overturning of 2021. It's a lot to fucking digest. I say, ooh, I need to pee. Okay? I make you go to the bathroom with me. I'm sitting on the toilet. I fart very loudly. I fart very loudly and wetly. Okay? Wetly. I'm in the bathroom at a party. They don't have Charmin. They have single ply toilet paper. I didn't know these people were fucking poor. <laughs> ah! At the White House, we only have Charmin. Okay. It's the best. There's no one better than Charmin. <laughs> what is it about sitting in this chair that makes me channel Donald Trump? <laughs> something about broski nation that makes me channel donald trump and it's not my fault y'all you bitches make me do it i'm gonna watch this edit back and be like you need to go to a facility you are approaching bojack horseman level you need to be 
<laughs> escorted to a facility. And what I fuck Bojack Horseman. Yeah. Put him up here. Bojack Horseman, dude. Voiced by Will Arnett. Yeah. 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 I would. And what do you bitches know about the Smartless documentary? About the Smartless documentary with Jason Bateman, Will Arnett, and Sean Hayes. What do you know? Why am I interviewing Hosier? Oh. <laughs> I'm going to a concert with Sarah Basco tonight, and she just texted me. I look like such a whore. My shorts are so short, I had to dry shave my inner thighs. <laughs> That is so real. I could never do that. My skin is so fucking sensitive. Dry shaving. This episode is sponsored by Newly. Fall is here and it's time to take these fits. Seriously, guys, no more playing around. There's no uggos in Broski Nation. Newly is a subscription clothing rental service that's all about helping you have fun and getting creative with your style. Renting from Newly every month helps me bring classic fall pieces into my wardrobe. The sort of quiet luxury stuff like tailored blazers, chunky knits, formal dresses, all that without dropping serious cash. Newly is a subscription clothing rental service and for just 98 bucks a month, you get your choice of any six styles each month. You can choose whatever you want to rent. For whatever you have going on, it's totally up to you. You get access to thousands of styles for more than 400 brands. Everything from party dresses to premium denim and one of a kind vintage pieces. Newly carries labels like Free People, Selkie, Farm Rio, Anthropology, Eloquai, Madewell, etc., etc. There's inclusive sizing as well. They go up to 5X as well as petite and maternity sizes, which Look, as a plus size girl myself, you know I love a size inclusive website. You get fast free shipping and returns and professional cleaning in Newly's state of the art laundering facility. So there's no laundry for you to worry about. You also get the option to buy what you love, sometimes up to 70% off. You get savings. So renting from Newly means getting to wear more while spending less. You can curb that I need to buy something new feeling every time you have an event to go to while still feeling confident and excited about your wardrobe. Newly lets you love fashion in a way that's kinder on the planet as well. Orders are shipped in recycled, recyclable, and reusable totes with absolutely no plastic packaging. Clothes are cleaned using energy and water efficient methods and styles are repaired rather than thrown out. It's also flexible. There's no fees, late fees, damage fees, or fees to pause or cancel. So no big deal if you lose a button, if you spill something, or just need to take a break. Newly is a great value at 98 bucks a month for any six styles, but right now you can get 20 bucks off your first month of Newly when you sign up with the code BROSKI20. Just go to N-U-U-L-Y.com, that's Newly with two U's, and enter the code BROSKI20. And sign up to get 20 bucks off your first month. That's N-U-U-L-Y dot com, newly with two U's, with code BROSKI20. Newly subscription clothing rental. Change your clothes. Let's calm down for a second. Do y'all remember Sam Tompkins from TikTok? We're going to put something up on the screen right now. Okay, actually, I'm going to plug in my fucking uh, headphones and we're going to listen. We're going to listen to a Sam Tompkins thing. Guys, I need to piss bad. I need to piss like a fire hose. Imagine the water pressure of those TikTok videos of someone pressure washing a driveway. That's going to be about what my piss is going to look like, okay? Because I had 17 Mai Tais. I had 17 alcohol-infused mocktails. I'm a sleep token. Okay, this is Sam Tompkins. So the story of me and Sam Tompkins is over the pandemic, he posted this video of him singing, like like busking on the street. He used to sing on the street in, in England. And he has one of the most, it, it might make me emotional talking about it. He has one of the most soulful, bluesy, like old soul voices I've ever heard. And when I hear a voice like that, it like electroshocks me and just like silence, which is hard to do because I don't shut the fuck up ever. What have I even said during this episode? I'm thinking about Robert Downey Jr. Okay. Sam Tompkins. I saw one of his covers on my For You page uh, during the pandemic, and I was just, I was floored by his talent. He 
I think it was a sort of Madison Beer situation where Justin Bieber recognized his talent and was like, we have got to get you in the studio. <laughs> he got the JB treatment, bitch. We have got to get you in the studio. I honestly don't really know Sam's story. I might, I'll talk to him tonight about it. I'm going to his show tonight. That's the end of the story. So I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of Sam. I have been since like 2020 and he followed me back and I was like, oh my God, he's, I love you. He was like, oh, I love you. He's like, you're so fucking funny. He's got the thickest English accent you could ever think of. And he's just such an incredibly talented songwriter and an incredibly soulful singer. And I cannot wait to see him blast off into success. He has a show tonight at the Troubadour in Los Angeles, which is a legendary, iconic venue. Elton John, Stevie Nicks, Harry Styles have all performed at this venue. He sold it out. I am so excited to see what Sam Tompkins does. I'm such a fan of someone who has such a raw and natural talent. He sings on the street, bitch. There's no auto-tune. There's no melodyne. There's no bullshit. He can sing. And I am so excited to see tonight. You don't even have to know one of his songs. Go to a Sam Tompkins show and you will be floored. I'm about to play this cover of him singing Lose It All live. And you're going to die. Here we go. Sit all hey. No, I don't want to lose it all. Hey. Who is doing it like Sam Tuckins, bitch? No one. No one. God damn. He is so talented. The Troubadour, let me look up the fucking, uh, I just saw Mitch Rowland at the Troubadour, by the way. A once in a lifetime thing. Mitch Rowland, if you don't know, where, where are my Harry's? Harry's, you better show the fuck up in the comments section. Harry's? No, Mitch Rowland. Mitch Rowland is Harry Styles' lead guitarist, okay? There is no Harry Styles without Mitch Rowland. I went to Mitch Rowland's premiere solo show at the Troubadour because of whatever the fuck connections got me to that place. It was so incredible. Sarah Jones played drums, obviously, for him. They have a baby together. It was a magical experience. I am so... Mitch Rowland is another one where I'm like, he's about to go on a North American tour. He deserves every ounce of recognition and fame and flowers. Um, I know that he's... Obviously, I think that with someone like Mitch, where he's a creative, he's not used to it being about him. You know, like, I feel like Mitch is the type to be, he's happy being a supporting act. He's happy being the lead guitarist. It's his show now. How exciting is that to establish, like, what's your stage presence? What's your image? What's your story you're telling? And the music is very good. It's sad. It's very sad, but it's very good. And uh, I'm excited to see where that goes. You know, like, obviously Harry's are going to show up to support him because, like I said, there's no Harry without Mitch. But what does Mitch sound like as Mitch Rowland? I'm very excited to see. Speaking of, like, that was the last time I was at the Troubadour. It's a small venue, but it's exciting because it's so iconic and it's so intimate. That level of intimacy, I think, has been lost at concerts. It's been lost at shows. And every time I get to experience something like that, seeing Sleep Token at the House of Blues, seeing Mitch at the Troubadour. I'm reminded how, it on it makes me cry, how human the connection is of how humans were made to sing and dance. Humans were made to celebrate life through song and dance. And at a venue like that where everyone's packed in and it's kind of sweaty and everyone's giggling and laughing and you meet new friends standing in line and you 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 bond over the shared joy that this music brings you. It's such an intimate thing. And I'm so proud of Sam to watch where he's come from and where he's going to go, especially in America. To have success in America as an English artist is so incredible. And um, it's very inspiring, honestly, because he can sing his fucking ass off, bitch. What was I going to look up? Troubadour Capacity. 500 people, 500 people. And I promise you in three to five years, Sam's going to be selling out stadiums. I promise you that. And you want to know the text I just fucking got? 
Because how am I going to talk about this? Oh, Call of Duty cosplayers. I just got a text from Orville Peck. Okay. His gay ass. <laughs> just got a text from Orville Peck. His gay ass. Gay. He really is gay. Saying, game night at Katya's house. What the fuck are you talking about? What the fuck are you talking about? It's so hard for me to be like, yeah, I'm just like going over. These people I would literally take a bullet for. If it was like Modern Warfare 3, okay, I'm in full tactical gear. I've got, I've got an AR-15 and Orville Peck was like, I need you to defend my house. I'd be like, K -k -k, I'm outside. I'm outside. I've watched enough Call of Duty cosplay and Call of Duty gameplay that I could do it. I could join the military. I could join the military. What about me says I wouldn't join the military? Okay. If you enlisted me in the rankings, I would immediately establish a dictatorship. I would immediately establish a military state, a police state, and I would have everyone be subservient to me. I personally wouldn't serve, but I would have people serve me. Okay. We're talking mass weapons. We're talking nukes. I've got the nuke codes right here on the Mickey phone. Okay, you think I wouldn't translate that to a military effort? You think I wouldn't wear, I would don the tactical gear, but would I go into battle now? Okay, that's for the straight men. The straight men in Broski Nation, you guys are going to war and I love you for it. I love you to death for it, okay? That's not gonna be me. Me and the girls, we're standing behind. We're standing behind, okay? And when we're called upon, that's when we'll enter. But one thing about, about the girls, we're going to go in in a sort of more like um, emotional manipulative way. Okay. I'm going to gaslight the other side into not committing war crimes. That's kind of my strategy. I am the very much, I'm channeling Daenerys Targaryen. Also, we do have dragons. Broski Nation does have dragons and wyverns both because a wyvern, I don't know how many fucking times I have to explain this. Dragons have four appendages, okay? Dragons have arms and legs and then wings. Wyverns, wyverns, wyverns. How do you say, <laughs> how do you say deck of cards in Spanish? That's something I Googled I, apparently. Mazo de cartas. That's not real. I think it's, it's, uh, uh, cards, card, tarjeta de juego. No, 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 uh, uh, How do you say deck of cards? Barajas. Barajas? Mis hispanohablantes. ¿Cómo se dice deck of cards? Como playing cards. Barajas? O tarjetas de juego. Tarjetas del juego. ¿No? ¿Qué significa mazo de cartas? No sé. ¿Qué es eso? The four suits are copas, oros, bastos, and espadas. Cups, coins, clubs, and swords. Swords? Copas, oros, bastos, y espadas. The cards are numbered from one to nine. What the fuck is going on in Spain, guys? I miss Spain. I miss el parque de tiro. But there are different cards in a Mexican deck of cards. There's numbers one through seven and three face cards. The jack, the horse rider, and the king for each of four suites. Clubs, cups, swords, coins. That's crazy. Why are they different? Wait, that's actually T. Are Spanish playing cards different? Spanish swords are straight and the clubs resemble knobbly, cu knobbly cudgels. What the fuck does that mean? Mazo de cartas. Deck of cards in Spanish. ¿Cuál es la traducción de deck of cards en español? Baraja, mazo. Oh, to cut a deck of cards. Destajar. Deck of cards, sustantivo. Baraja, mazo. Which one is it? Where are my hispanohablantes? You guys have got to tell me in the comments. That sounds right. Baraja de cartas. I went up. Oh, this is embarrassing. 
I did a literal translation. When I was in Spain in June, I went with Stanley and Jack Innanen. And I, I told them, I said, I don't know the direct translation for like playing cards because we were trying to play a game um, in the park. I said, go up and ask them for um, tarjetas el juego, <laughs> which is the literal, if you were to say uh, playing cards, tarjeta es como uh, a credit card. Like if you're paying with a credit card, tarjeta. And then juego is game. Okay, so a game card, playing cards. In my brain, I was like, tarjeta es el juego. That makes sense. Tiene sentido. And I told him to say that. And they went up. And Jack in and his fucking Canadian accent, he was like, uh, usted tiene tarjeta es el juego? And the guy was like, tarjeta. Como paga, paga con tarjeta. And he was like, si. Sí. <laughs> Which means, oh, you're paying with card. And the guy goes, ah, no, no, no. We don't accept card. And Jack was like, uh, uh, and I wasn't with him. <laughs> so he came back and he was like, I got nervous. He said Tarheta and I got nervous. And I was like, oh, he probably thought that you meant like, do you accept card? He was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh yeah, I can't help you. <laughs> oh, I can't help you. And so guys, let me know if you're talking about playing cards, if we're playing solitaire or any games like that, like go fish. Is that mafo, mafo de, what was it? Mazo de cartas? That doesn't sound right. I think it's baraja. Yeah, baraja de cartas. Let me know. Okay, guys. I have got to go, actually, because it's 7.16. I need to leave at 7.30. I love you guys so much. For the record, I don't know what the fuck I talked about during this episode. But if I looked good doing it, that's all you need to tell me in the comments, okay? If you need to... Please subscribe to the fucking YouTube channel. Because we're uploading full YouTube videos of these podcast episodes. Go watch them, okay? I don't ask for much. Oh, I don't ask for much. Go watch the YouTube videos. Stream it on Spotify. Stream it on Apple Music, okay? I'm about to pee in my pants. Um, I love you guys very, very much. I love Hosier. I'm interviewing Hosier on Sunday. I'll let you know how it goes next podcast episode. And um, I told you guys I'd talk about Avatar. I didn't get around to it because I was talking about mm, God knows what for the last 55 minutes. Love you guys. Go watch my YouTube videos. Go watch Royal Court. Subscribe to this channel. Subscribe to the Brittany Broski channel. And uh, I'll see you next time. And if, sorry, I'm mucusy. I'm kind of getting over a cold and I'm like very, I'm congested. I'm just a girl. I'm just a girl. I don't know. It's not COVID though. I took a COVID test. It was negative. Okay, I love you guys. And we'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.